Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I stand before you as the president of National Action Network. We do not endorse candidates, but we report where candidates stand on criminal justice, economic empowerment, health equity, and other issues. On one side of this race is Donald Trump, a fellow New Yorker I've known for 40 years. Only once, once in that time, did he take a position on racial issues. He spent a small fortune on full-page ads calling for the execution of five innocent young teenagers. Well, I'm going to bring them out in a minute, but, and you'll hear from them tonight. Because they were not executed, they're here to continue to fight. But it was there that I saw Trump love to fan racial fame, flames. On the other side is a woman that I've walked with in Selma, Alabama to commemorate the 59th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. <laughs> Kamala Harris spoke to me that day about unity and passing bills. All I ever heard from Donald Trump was how he can get an advantage. I see one candidate who wants to protect the right to vote while the other has tried to cook up 11,000 votes in Georgia. I see a candidate who with Joe Biden brought leaders to the White House to confront violent hatred, running against a man who said neo-Nazis in Charlottesville were fine people. I see a candidate who has sought to reform and uphold the law, and a man who wrongly assumes his mugshot appeals to black Americans. I work with Kamala Harris in every job she's had. She has consistently committed to making government work for those of us who've been disadvantaged. All Donald Trump has been consistent about is making himself richer and sowing division to get that done. This man sat right here in Chicago a few weeks ago refusing to apologize for claims that migrants were taking black jobs. Well, in November, we're going to show him when blacks do their job. And we are going to join with whites and browns and Asians, and we're going to do a job on those that have done a job on us. Tonight, we are going to realize Shirley Chisholm's dream. Fifty-two years ago, I was one of the youth directors in her campaign for president. And 52 years after she was told to sit down, I know she's watching us tonight as a black woman stands up to accept the nomination for President of the United States. We have fought too hard for women to be told to get out of the kitchen. We are now on our way to the Oval Office. We won't go back. We fought hard. We fought hard for LGBTQ loved ones to get out the closet. We won't go back.
We fought hard for the right to choose, the right to education. We suffered and died and bled, went to jail to get the right to vote. We won't go back. must be committed no matter how the Supreme Court tries to roll back on civil rights, no matter what the amount of money they have, we are here because others fought and suffered for us and we vowed tonight we won't go back. This November, we will go forward to fulfill the promise of a just and fair nation. And let me say, as we transition, I'm a preacher. And in Psalms it says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We've endured January 6th. We've endured conspiracy theories. We've endured lies and areas of darkness. But if we stay together, black, white, Latina, Asian, Indian American, if we stay together, joy, 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 joy coming in the morning. I want to now, since I was a teenager, I was mentored by Reverend Jesse Jackson. And Reverend Jackson taught us to fight for what's right. And now I want to bring out some young men that I fought for. I referred to them then, they were known as the Central Park Five. Now they are the Exonerated Five. Raymond, Raymond Santana, Kevin Richardson, Yusef Salam, Corey Weiss, the exonerated five. Good evening, people. My name is Corey Wise. 35 years ago, my friends and I were in prison for a crime we did not commit. Our youth was stolen from us. Every day, as we walked into court courtroom, people screamed at us, threatened us because of Donald Trump. He spent $85,000 on a full page ad in the, in the New York Times calling for our execution. We, we were innocent kids, but we, but, we all, but we served a total of 41 years in prison. Reverend Al Sharpton stood with us now I'm proud to stand with him today. <laughs> Vice President Kamala Harris has also worked to make things fairer. I know she will do the same as president. Now prove that message.
I love these guys. These are my brothers. These are my brothers. Yes, indeed. America. I am Yusuf Salam. A New York City councilman representing my hometown of Harlem. That's right. Man. Representing my hometown of Harlem, USA. And listen, as my friend Corey Wise just said, 45 wanted us unalive. He wanted us dead. Today, we are exonerated because the actual perpetrator confessed and DNA proved it. That guy says he still stands by the original guilty verdict. He dismisses the scientific evidence rather than admit he was wrong. He has never changed and he never will. That man thinks that hate is the animating force in America. It is not. We have the constitutional right to vote. In fact, it is a human right. So let us use it. I want you to walk with us. I want you to march with us. I want you to vote with us. And together, and let me tell you, this is going to be so beautiful. And together, on November 5th, we will usher in Kamala Harris and Tim Walls into the White House. So I want to do this. When I say one day, I want you to say, see us. When they see us. When they see us. When they see us, America will finally say goodbye to that hateful man. We will say what I have said after seven long years of wrongful incarceration. Free at last. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.